ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚಧರ್ಮಸ್ವಿಣೆ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಚಧರ್ಮಸ್ವಿಣೆ ಅವತಾರ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯತೆ ನಮಃ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜ್ಯೋತಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೃತಂಗಮಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಬೋ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಇಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಖಾರೋನೈಕ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಟು ದ ರಿಯಲ್ to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been discussing many spiritual topics during sunday service which are very useful for our life spirituality results in giving immense peace and joy we have to learn how to live our life and then you will really enjoy your life on this planet today's topic divine motherhood it is very important for us to know the significance of the woman in managing our life the whole creation is resting on this divine motherhood without the concept of mother you can't think of creation at all so the woman plays a very significant role in the divine play of god and shri ramakrishna through his life has shown how to respect woman how to regard the woman if you are planning to realize the truth without the grace of the divine mother you will never be able to succeed in your spiritual life never think even for a moment that woman's life is simply to be a wife of somebody not at all it is one of the functions of the woman it doesn't mean that she is born just to become a wife of somebody just to become an object of enjoyment no it is not just for that it is not just to satisfy the craving of a person that the woman is born it's a foolish idea people entertaining regarding the woman woman is meant for enjoyment that idea should be completely removed from the mind if you are aspiring for purity if you are aspiring for realization if you are aspiring for freedom if you are really aspiring for peace and happiness so this is the preamble for my talk today divine motherhood how from beginning to end Sri Ramakrishna cherished this concept how he cultivated and developed 
in his own life and highlighted the most significant part of the woman. But we have no time to think all these things. All our time is spent in the jealousy, hatred, anger and all nonsense. All our energy is spent in inflating our ego. No. So, you must be open-minded to think the reality. It's only when you are opening yourself totally, you will understand, you can diagnose the reason for your suffering and you find the solution to your problems. So we have seen in Sri Ramakrishna's life how he treated Holy Mother. Why she Sharda Devi was called Holy Mother. It is not because he was the wife of Sri Ramakrishna he was called as Holy Mother. Because she had the qualities of the divine. She had the quality of the divine goddess. So Sri Ramakrishna very emphatically said, Sri Sharda Devi is none other than Goddess Lakshmi, Goddess Saraswati. And how true it is, you will understand. If you study Holy Mother's life, you must be pure enough to understand Holy Mother's life. With your impure mind and impure thinking, an impure way of life, you will never be able to understand the life of Holy Mother. Probably you will be able to understand, oh, she lived like us and she had passed through all sorts of problems, sufferings in the life and surrounded by uh, relations, always tormenting her. What is the speciality in Sri Sharda Devi? To be called as Holy Mother, like that you begin to think about. But, if you are entering into the realm of spiritual field, you must need to know the importance of the Divine Mother, how you are able to show dignity and respect to the women. That's the important thing that we should note. That is, we note, we discuss the idea to practice, not simply to hear and let it off. Then you will be where, wherever you were there before. You will never move an inch onward in your path. So, if you study Sri Ramakrishna's life, you find Sri Ramakrishna worshipped Sri Sharda Devi as the Divine Mother of the Universe. In order to set an ideal to the people in the world, Sri Ramakrishna brought the goddess from the heavens. He married her to show that married life does not necessarily mean the life of physical pleasure. In the year before he passed away, Swami Vivekananda, the greatest apostle of Sri Ramakrishna, what did he do? He worshipped Divine Mother Durga in a very elaborate way in Belur Mat, where monks and brahmacharins live. And then Swami Vivekananda said, Every incarnation, worshipped Mother, or how could he have got energy? And he tells Sri Ramachandra, Worship the Divine Mother Durga. Shankaracharya, the Apostle of Vedanta, worship the Divine Mother in her various forms and aspects. If you see Shankaracharya's compositions, how most beautiful hymns are there on the Divine Mother. Bhavani Ashtaka, Annapurna Stotra, full of spiritual meaning. If you read those hymns, you feel a soothing effect in yourself. You feel indescribable joy. You feel closeness to the mother. Someone in the West asked Swami Vivekananda, 
why he became a monk swami ji replied why should i marry when in every woman i see only the divine mother in another place swami ji said the mother is holy the motherhood of god is more in his mind than fatherhood he said that the destiny of the people as that of the world rests on not on lawmakers of today but on the women the destiny of the world depends on the women you find so much of damage in the value system in our character in our behavior in our dealings why it is all happening because we are not paying due attention due care due respect to women swami vivekananda says the worship of even one spark of mother in our earthly mother leads to greatness worship her if you want love and wisdom he told his western disciples that way he says swami ji's words don't think woman is born as a uh, doll for the enjoyment of the man never think in that way so mother worship has been practiced in different cultures in different ways in india it has got a continued history from distant past to modern times this concept of motherhood is there i should say it is eternal even in the pre aryan civilizations like mohenjodaro and harappa female figures have been found which are supposed to be idols of earth goddess prithvi devi we call in rigveda there is prithvi sukta before you construct a building you offer worship to the mother goddess the goddess of earth before you dig for construction ancient societies especially the matriarchal ones brought the worship of god as mother the vedas because for us particularly who are brought up in hindu culture hindu tradition we always take the source of inspiration from the vedas our whole hindu system is based on the ideology given by vedas in the vedas there is a mention of the goddess aditi aditi the mother of gods she is called deva mata and she is also called the mother of the universe rigved speaks of the goddess prithvi great is our mother like that there is a sanskrit verse in the rigveda in the atharva veda it is said earth is mother i am the son of the earth so that kind of reverence for the earth should be developed should be cultivated from the beginning in the aitareya brahman part of the upanishads uh, part of the vedas and also in some upanishads this earth is identified with shri the goddess of harvest and fertility that's why you find when the in the, during the harvest season i have seen in india how they offer worship to goddess i have seen a temple there in bangalore every year during the harvest season thousands of people come and offer worship to the mother in the puranas this shri is respected as shri devi bhu devi the shakti of vishnu vishnu is always uh, with shri and bhu shri devi and bhu devi if you see lord venkateshwar temple you see on the image of lord venkateshwar in the center in the region of the chest you find two goddesses one is shri devi another is bhu devi shri and bhu symbolizing prosperity and productivity durga the most important goddess of uh, indian tradition is also known as dhanya roopa symbolic of rice she is again also known as shakambari the herb nourishing goddess she is also called annapurna the repository of food 
the sustainer of the universe. She is also called Brahmari, that is the cosmic female bee giving honey to life. Cosmic female bee giving honey to life. So she is called Brahmari. This same Divine Mother later on appears as Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge. See, every Devi, every goddess has got particular function accordingly the name is given. Just as you say, the energy, in one way it is called electrical energy, in another way it is called magnetic energy, in another way it is called kinetic energy, another way it is called static energy, another way it is called nuclear energy. Energy is a common, but depending on its function, how it acts upon, the name is given. So, the mother goddess is called Saraswati, the source of all knowledge. Without her grace, you will never be able to get wisdom. She is also the god of all fine arts. Her stringed instrument stands for all arts and music. If you have seen the image of Saraswati, you see Swan also. Swan is the vehicle of goddess Saraswati. It stands for immaculate purity. Swan is noted for purity, which is the source of all knowledge. Later on, Gayatri, the foremost mantra of Indian culture, is also worshipped as mother. So, this mother power, which was so long represented by earth and various goddesses, was for the first time manifested through an inspired woman in the Rig Veda. Most of you are not familiar with Vedas, but there are specific passages. Particularly, there is a Sukta called Devi Sukta in Mandala 10 in Rugved. It is an inspired utterance of Vak, the daughter of the sage Ambarina. This woman speaks after complete identification with the primal energy, the Mahashakti, which creates, sustains and destroys the universe. She was a daughter of a Rishi, but she meditated upon, she realized the truth and she felt total identification with the divine power. And then she began to say, it is I who move in the form of the Rudras, the Vasus, the Adityas and all other gods. I myself speak this truth which is respected by gods and men. Whomever I choose, I make him great, the creator, the seer and genius. I am the power behind the bow of Rudra when he goes to destroy enemies of seers and saints. I wage war to protect the good. I pervade heaven and earth. These are the utterances of this lady who got a realization of the truth. This cosmic power protecting the universe has been most magnificently portrayed as Chandi, Durga in Saptashati. Durga is also mentioned in an appendix in Rigveda and also in Taitri Aranyaka. And there is another Upanishad called Kena Upanishad. There, you, there the Divine Mother is called Uma, the virgin daughter of the mountain Himalayas. Uma has been interpreted as the power of Shiva. Well, we meditate on the Divine Mother. May the Goddess Durga direct us. Like that, there is a passage in the Taitriya Aranyaka which praises the Divine Mother as Virgin. That's why it's called Kanya Kumari. In India, if you, the southern tip of the India is Kanya Kumari. If you have not seen, please go and see. It's a beautiful place where the image of Kanya Kumari is installed. It is excellent. You can't describe in words the beauty of that image. Even today, lots of people go and offer their worship to Mother. In the Ramayana, Uma has been described as the daughter of the Himalayas and the consort of Mahadeva. Brahadaranika Upanishad describes how the one undivided reality became two pairs of all species. This Vedic idea has filtered into the Puranas and we find there is a Shakti or consort with every deity. 
ಲೈಕ್ ರಾಧಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೀತಾ ಅಂಡ್ ರಾಮ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಅಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮಾಯ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಟು ವೇದಾಂತ ಸೊ ದ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಪವರ್ ಮೇಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಿಮೇಲ್ ದ ಚಂಡಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸಪ್ತ ಶತಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮದರ್ ಆಸ್ ಮಹಾಮಾಯ ದ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ which hides the reality by binding us down to sense life to all its miseries and afflictions this mahamaya when honored when she is propitiated what will happen turns into mahavidya or mahashakti it opens up the higher and diviner aspects of life and bestows on us the divine strength both in internal and external life when you propitiate mother you will immediately receive her love and grace this divine mother power which people began worshiping as various goddesses slowly got manifested in the mother aspect and the knowledge aspect of all women right from the vedic times great women have come up embodying the higher powers of knowledge and purity symbolized in the various deities representing the divine mother so women came to be respected as symbols of divine mother the rigveda says the wife and husband being the equal halves of one substance they are equal in every respect therefore both should join and take equal parts in all work religious and secular this is the quotation from the rigved in fact in the vedic period even the girls like boys they were given initiation into gayatri they were also having thread ceremony upanayana and they would practice vow of celibacy study and independent spiritual life don't think spiritual life is meant exclusively for the men it is equally possible for women manu the ancient lawgiver accepted the vedic idea and held up the fundamental equality of men and women before the creation of the phenomenal universe the first born lord of all creatures divided his own self into two halves so that one half should be male and the other half female many women became seers and preachers of highest spiritual truth we should not forget this point it is recorded in the upanishads the names of the women have also been given they were called as brahma vadinis they were very great vedic wisdom was revealed by great women seers like lopa mudra shashwati aditi there are so many names given there they have composed inspiring hymns we call them suktas we can read them in the rigved you must have heard the name of these two famous women saints gargi and maitri in brahmaranika upanishad the philosopher saint gargi's discussions on the highest philosophical topics with the seer agyavalkya in brahmaranya upanishad if you read them it is so fascinating and thrilling the discussion similarly immortal is the answer of his enlightened wife maitreyi who rejected the wealth and comfort of worldly life choosing immortality as the goal then what shall i do with that by which i cannot become immortal tell me venerable sir of that alone which you know to be the only means to immortality you can read the brother and complete all these details are given there it's very interesting and fascinating much later in history when you come to the life of shankaracharya he offered respect to bharati the enlightened wife of mandan mishra for her knowledge when shankaracharya had to discuss had to enter into a debate with mandan mishra 
in order to establish the supremacy of vedanta how karma cannot lead one to freedom karma he meant the ritualistic karmas which were being observed during that period and shankaracharya the great exponent of vedanta he is discussing with mandan mishra the great exponent of karma both were great in their field of knowledge and who is the judge to declare who has won in the debate it is mandan mishra's wife whose name was bharati in fact later on you find shankaracharya of course shankaracharya won mandan mishra was defeated in the discussion and according to the agreement mandan mishra had to renounce his householder's life and became a monk he was the first pontiff of shingeri math first established by shankaracharya in shingeri his name is sureshwar acharya sureshwar shankaracharya established 10 traditions in monastic order one of them is called bharati chandrashekar bharati bharati the name of one of his monastic orders is derived from the this incident the mahabharat gives the account of sulabha a wandering nun and great yogini the daughter of the sage shandilya became brahmacharini a wandering nun and practiced yoga in the age of buddha royal princess queen mothers and even ordinary women embraced the life of brahmavadinis and some of them reached great spiritual heights in jaina religion mahavir himself opened the door to high spiritual life for 5000 women and ladies from distinguished houses 5000 women so women became the teachers of society and ideals of spiritual knowledge there is a legacy of the women later bhakti cult came and produced a few great women figures like andal in south india meera bai there are many many women saints then in course of time the indian women passed through a long dark spell of nearly 1000 years when women were completely losing their way of uh, conducting spiritual life as swami vivekananda said child producing machines the women became child producing machines many of the women remained unhonored and virtually exploited that is the situation even now the situation is not improved much but lot of uh, hope is there women are coming up to the level of men in the spiritual life then by the advent of shri ram krishna holy mother and swami vivekananda it's very important to study these three figures women were again installed to their pristine vedic eminence the west offers the highest respect to women as lover mistress or wife that's how they pay respect to the women the indians began to respect the great power mahashakti in all women by honoring them as divine mother in complete works of vivekananda swami vivekananda has said the highest of all feminine types in india is mother higher than wife why mother represents the colorless love that knows no barter it's very important to know love that never dies who can have such love only the mother not son nor daughter nor wife these are the words of vivekananda in his karma yoga lectures in the west swami vivekananda said blessed indeed is the man who is able to look upon women as a representative of the motherhood of god blessed indeed is the woman to whom man represents the fatherhood of god in his master shri ramakrishna vivekananda witnessed an epoch making manifestation of the mother aspect of god to his brother disciples swami vivekananda wrote the motherhood of god 
is prominent in this incarnation. Sri Ramakrishna used to dress himself as a woman. He was as it were our mother. And we must likewise look upon all women as reflections of the mother. In India, there are two great evils trampling on the women and grinding the poor through caste restrictions. He was a savior of women, savior of the masses, savior of all high and low. That is the significance of Sri Ramakrishna's advent. Sri Ramakrishna's life inspired Swami Vivekananda to write to an Indian disciple. Do you know who is the real Shakti worshipper? It is he who knows that God is the omnipresent force in the universe and sees in woman manifestation of that force. The Divine Mother has become everything, Sri Ramakrishna used to say, and he saw her everywhere. To Holy Mother Sharda Devi, Sri Ramakrishna once said, I look upon you as the same embodiment of the Divine Mother Kali who is in the temple and my own mother Chandramani who lives in the music tower. From that day onwards, the twin aspects of the Divine Mother and the Human Mother of saints and sinners got intermingled in the life of Sharda Devi. That's why you find anybody could go for comfort for peace, for happiness. Anybody could go to Sharda Devi. She would never stop anyone coming to her. Her love extended without any condition. Ahaituka Kripa Sindhu That is the qualification of the Holy Mother. Unconditional grace. That is Mother Sharda Devi. The fallen and rejected ones like a drunkard Padmalochan and Ramani, they used to see their own human mother in Sharda Devi. Nivedita, an Irish lady who was greatly influenced by Swami Vivekananda, who later on dedicated her whole life towards the uh, activities of the Indian freedom and towards educating the women how to do, etc. She saw, she saw in Holy Mother Holy Mother means, whenever I say Holy Mother, it is Sharda Devi. So, Nivedita saw in Holy Mother her Mary, the Mother of Christ. Vivekananda, with his prophetic vision, saw in Holy Mother the resurrection of the epoch-making Mother Power, which was destined to purify and elevate a sensate civilization. In Holy Mother, she Sharda Devi, Vivekananda saw the embodiment of the highest ideal of Indian womanhood. In her dutifulness of Katyayani, the faithfulness, infinite purity and suffering of Sita and Savitri, they were all great women characters. They were combined with Meera's devotion, Maitreya's renunciation, Gargi's knowledge and the spiritual eminence attainable only by incarnations of God. You could find all these qualities fully bloomed in Holy Mother. With the severest asceticism of Sati for Shiva, Holy Mother combined the broad Catholicity and practical spirituality of a most modern mind. Even without the least touch of worldliness, Sharda Devi was a perfect housewife and mother of a large household. Without being an ordinary mother, she manifested the all-conquering and all-purifying power of love of a universal mother for her countless children all over the globe. From the West, Vivekananda first revealed his vision of the Holy Mother to his brother disciples. Swamiji writes in that uh, letter, you have not yet understood the wonderful significance of mother's life, none of you, but gradually you will know. Without Shakti there is no regeneration for the world. Why is it that our country is the weakest and the most backward of all countries? He is referring to India. Because 
Shakti is held in dishonor there. Mother has been born to revive the wonderful Shakti in India. Mother, he mean he means Holy Mother, and making her the nucleus once more. Gargis and Maitreyis will be born into this world. Hence, Swamiji says, it is Sharda Mat that I want first. Without the grace of Shakti, nothing is to be accomplished. Vivekananda saw. He saw that centering ground the personality of Holy Mother. The new generation of great women would arise, but who will be the first to follow her footsteps and give Vivekananda's dream an articulate shape? Who was to do that? It was an Irish lioness, Nivedita, Irish lioness, who came forward to sacrifice her life for realizing this epoch-making dream of her master. means vivekan vivekan the brother to be empowered and blessed by sharda devi she called this day of first meeting with the holy mother as day of days within a few days she like her master could realize that this simple hindu lady was the greatest woman in today's world this is these are the words of nivedita transcended the visions of lofty women who did shakespeare she was holy mother was ramakrishna's last word as to the ideal of indian womanhood nivedita soon realized apparently an uneducated and a village woman holy mother was a no blessed and most powerful woman nivedita could ever imagine and the secret of this power what is the secret of this magnificent power manifested by holy mother it was her life of constant communion with god in a world of utmost silence solitude and austerity a tremendous dynamic power emanated from shri sharda devi while she remained completely absorbed within herself she touched upon the very heart of life these are the words of nivedita she wrote like this when will silence bring a blessing for me she prayed during her first few days with the holy mother her prayer was granted holy mother accepted nivedita as her own daughter in nivedita holy mother saw the embodiment of the ever blissful mother later on when nivedita sent her prayers for holy mother during her illness she said may the prayer that has risen in your pure brahmachari in heart be fulfilled nivedita's master vivekananda dedicated this pure life at the feet of shiva and buddha brahmacharya should burn like the fire of god within the veins with these words vivekananda blessed her daughter disciple true to her master's wish nivedita emerged as a symbol of ancient brahmavadinis and a torch bearer in the resurrection of mother power in india for modern times the indians saw in nivedita lokamata the mother of the people and shikhamayi nari the woman with the flame of knowledge swam vivekananda blessed her be thou to indians future son mr servant friend in one an orthodox hindu brahmin brahmacharini was vivekananda's ideal for the women of character who must also combine the spirit of broad catholicity and universalism this spirit of universalism vivekananda saw in the holy mother when she threw away the age old barrier of caste orthodoxy and received the three western ladies one is mrs bull the second one is miss macleod and the third one nivedita when holy mother received them she said she addressed them as 
my daughters it was this deep foresight and kindness with which vivekananda wanted to make hinduism expansive and even aggressive like the mother church hinduism the holy mother accepted people of different races as her own children within her broad universal wings vivekananda dreamt of such a race of super women who would successfully combine perfect freedom with perfect authority the western spirit of freedom and dynamism with the eastern spirit of orthodoxy solitude self denial and ascetic drive for inner purification of this combination he said two different races mix and fuse and out of them rises one strong distinct type the spirit of universalism is the most difficult to bring but vivekananda was insistent on this he said there must be room for sects as well as rising above sects and this could be established more easily through the spirit of worshiping god in man this hide this idea of humanitarian man worship exists in nucleus in india but it has never been sufficiently practiced he said and he wanted nivedita to keep this as compulsory part of her new education for women worshiping the feet of beggars or worshiping the school girls as uma kumari must be practiced as a wonderful practical training of heart and hand together it is a worship of the shakti not in mere thought not in imagination but in actual visible form he wrote of the western respect offered to women as wife or mistress his mission was to turn this western attitude into a worship of divine mother in all women the ideal of perfect chastity in marriage practiced in india developed in due course into the ideal of brahmacharins and brahmacharinis vivekananda showed the deepest respect to the indian idea of faithfulness in marriage which had been glorified in the episode of sita savitri and other great women such a concept of marriage helps one to rise above marriage nivedita saw that in ramakrishna's historic life marriage was perfected by the man's acceptance of his wife as a mother it is a moment of the mergence of the human in the divine she wrote even in householder's life vivekananda asserted the monastic purity must be held high for monasticism is the highest ideal attainable by humanity of women's education in india some vivekananda had high dreams we must turn out the greatest intellects in india he said of them yet none felt better that this intellectual education must be combined with eternal mastery and in their freedom the western ideal of the greatness of physical womanhood was to his eyes hiding a corps beneath flowers true to her master nivedita shed her life blood for laying the foundation of this education for india's future womanhood that education has just started taking shape Indian educators have to extend and fulfill the vision of Vivekananda Nivedita wrote and when this is done the time will not be far distant to see the Indian woman take a rightful place amongst the womanhood of the world when Nivedita was going to plunge into this historic action of starting the first girls school in the name of Sri Ram Krishna she went to holy mother for her blessings and her blessings was showered upon the first school for girls started by nivedita with the assurance that the girls it should train by ideal girls nivedita wrote i cannot imagine a grander omen than her blessings spoken over the educated hindu womanhood of the future the glorious awakening of the mother power that happened in the life of sharda devi has found successful echo since then in many more women both of the east and the west so if you have to evolve spiritually 
if you if you have to have fulfillment in your spiritual aspiration you must recognize the significance of the divine motherhood then only you'll be able to cherish pure love then only you'll be able to cultivate divine qualities in your life then only you'll be able to bear all the sufferings in the life so this concept of divine motherhood has been well exhibited well well manifested in the life of shri ramakrishna and here is the life of holy mother representing the divine motherhood she is there all the time she is ready to shower her grace only we have to look up on her mother herself has said well if you are having any problem if you are facing any crisis if you are undergoing any suffering just call me just call that's all i don't need anything i don't need any special worship to be done to me simply say oh ma please protect me please save me from the situation i will take care of everything don't worry this is the assurance of the holy mother given to people anybody can call and mother herself said if anyone calls me a mother i can not turn my eyes away that person was bound to receive my love and grace and blessings with these words i conclude my talk thank you very much